throw it on throw it on the computer and awesome. you have to and you have to go um, live in the Facebook group. Okay, cool. So I'll do that in just a second. Actually, you know what? We're just going to um, rock and roll, and then we're going to go live later. Okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the combination masterclass between Nancy Abramson and Timothy Morgan. We're going to be talking about marketing meets focus. So excited. I'm going to go ahead and share screen right now so that we can all buckle up, get ready, take some notes. Um, I have the responsibility for the first hour, and then Nancy's going to help us with the second hour. Uh, because you're here or you're watching this recording, we want to be able to bless you and give you some tips. This is not your typical like webinar, okay? This is a master class. Take some notes, bu buckle up, get ready. And if you have any questions along the way, you can always make notes, make comments, reach out to us. We'll be able to answer any questions you have as you watch through this, okay? So awesome. And by the way, Nancy, thank you so much for helping our team in so many different ways as we work on projects together and help us keep, us keep us focused and trying to get zeroed in and laser focused on profitability and just, just making sure that, you know, we can help each other in different projects. I just really appreciate your help. It's, it's been very, very, very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure and my honor. Awesome. Well, let's jump in, shall we? I'm Timothy Morgan. Founder, CEO of Giver Marketing and the Giver Marketing Network. There's some of our team members here today in the VIP Zoom room, but uh, we also have a, a great group that's on Facebook and uh, love, 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 love our Facebook groups, right, Nancy? Both of us have some fun, fun groups to be able to connect with. And uh, here's some kind words that folks are saying about the Giver Marketing Network online. You can always just Google Giver Marketing or Giver Marketing Network, and you'll see some more kind words out in the World Wide Web out in the Ethernet, and so we're we're glad to be able to to showcase that. We're proud of that. We are the highest rated reviewed network of marketing specialists on the planet. All right, got to give a nod to Bob Berg because this is one of our favorite quotes, and it helps us set our mindset, helps us set our hearts in the right direction for how we prefer to think about marketing and business and and, and kind of the 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 way we process information around our companies, our causes, and even if we're a community leader just trying to rally the troops and do some good in the world, we want to encourage you. Look, all things being equal, we do business, we hang out with people that we know, like, and trust. These are the people that we want to be with. These are the people we're aligned with. These are the people we, I like to say, you know, I like to say folks that I trust, you know, I, I, I trust them to some degree with our finances, with our friendships, and those kind of things. These are the people we want to work with on some level. So I want to encourage you on that. And people pay more attention, pay more attention to the folks that they 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 pay. And and they and if you if you have a level of respect, people will pay more for your services. And that authority is something we're going to talk about in just a second. Okay. Just know that you're about you're entering into a coaching experience. This is a group coaching experience. It's a master class with a coaching flavoring. Okay. So yes, we're presenting information, but just know that I'm going to be asking questions. And if you want to get the most out of this training and this experience with both Nancy and myself, be ready to answer those questions. This is a, uh, and by the way, with coaching, you get so much more results in all in the, in your business efforts and all those kind of things. So we're glad to be able to help you that way. And uh, as an extra goodie and a bonus, if you sign up for our Giver Marketing Challenge, which at this time of this recording is a no-cost experience, um, you'll be able to earn some extra goodies, a lot of bonuses. And this is technically session number one of that challenge. So you already got a jump start on that. And it's called the Giver Marketing Blueprint. Your reward, should you choose to accept the mission, is an over $1,500 value called the Marketing Accelerator Package. This is not a pitch, this is a gift. This is anybody who is willing to go through the action items we're gonna talk about today and in just a few more, then you'll be able to earn these rewards. And we're glad to be able to encourage you and bless you in that way, just for participating at a high level. Uh, you can always go to givermarketing.com slash group to learn more about all the details around that. That is our Facebook group private Facebook group. And if you say some nice things, then you'll be entered into, you'll be allowed into that group. This is a full 
overview of the action items needed to earn the reward we just mentioned. Uh, you can take a screenshot or you can pause this, kind of kind of go through them, but this will give you an idea, a lay of the land, a roadmap, if you will, of how to earn that reward. After coaching and collaborating with thousands of causes and companies over the last decade, a pattern emerged. And this pattern has now become our signature process called the Giver Marketing Blueprint. This is the blueprint here on the screen. And for those who are watching and listening, this is, this is an awesome, awesome way to just think about your marketing in general, okay? Branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing. If you focus on those areas individually in that order, you'll see exponentially more results. This is why um, coaching and guidance and mentorship and, and helping your business is so important because we don't know sometimes what to do first, second, and third. And Nancy's gonna be talking more about that and how to kind of get your mind around what, what do we do first? What do we do second? What's the priorities? What, what makes the most sense? What's, how do we help? How do we make sure and manage our time well? But what I wanna mention here is that there is an order to these things. And that's why Nancy and I just love working together because of that kind of mindset, right? So think about it this way. If, if we were to give you a micro assignment, hint, 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 which we're gonna give you four in just the next 45 minutes, they're gonna be around branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing in that order. These are the orders we want you to try to execute on these micro assignments. Some call them uh, little mini action assignments. And we wanna make sure that you get the chance to kind of remember these things and participate in a way that will actually affect your business or your, your cause or community effort that you're involved with. We wanna make sure that you have the ability to take action on these steps so that they can affect your organization positively moving forward. Before we go into all of those action steps and, and just make sure that you have some, some tips and ideas and, and, and action items to kind of pursue, I wanna define marketing really quickly because there's a lot of confusion out there Nancy and I, and I have talked about this, Stacy and Karim and others that are in the room have talked about this extensively. In the small business or small organization world, oftentimes marketing and sales is mixed. You don't know what, where one starts and one ends. In the, in the larger corporations, which I know Nancy, you have some background in this, they're oftentimes separated, but they're, they, they have difficulty communicating with each other sometimes. And they're kind of in their own silos, like marketing's not doing their job, sales isn't closing the deals, and there's all these conversations going back and forth. Well, we have a high level of respect for both. We think of them as two pistons to a small engine. And business development, right? Just marketing, sales, sales, marketing. They're, they're like brothers and sisters, okay? But listen, marketing is not the same as sales, and sales is not the same as marketing. They're different hats. You almost have to think differently when you get into these conversations. A conversation when it comes to marketing is really a pre-sales communication to earn the right to actually have a decision meeting at some point. So marketing really is, is about those four things that we just mentioned before. Think of them as a funnel. You wanna make sure at top of funnel, People understand that you're branded well and they can find you. And when you start promoting and nurturing those conversations, if the trust begins to build and build and build and build, and they end up moving kind of through your funnel in a healthy and an organic and a relational way. And so marketing is not the same as sales. You're not asking for a commitment. You're not asking for an exchange of value necessarily in a traditional sense. But what you are doing is you're setting the stage for the right to be able to do that. Whether you're leading a small organization or a large one, it's important to know the difference, okay? So here's another way to look at it. There's two kind of smaller funnels. One is the marketing funnel. It drops right into the sales process. Marketing, you're tracking conversations and appointments and attention and engagement and these kind of things. Sales, you're really tracking one thing. Your metrics are really around one thing. It's closing rate and transactions. That's, that's pretty much it. It's the transactions, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to train on that today. We're a marketing company. We focus on marketing only. We actually work with a lot of sales trainers and business coaches like you know Nancy and others that really come in with their zone of genius. We, we do different things. So we want to make sure and be clear that we're not talking about sales today. Okay, We're talking about setting the, seat, the stage for possibilities 
when it comes to earning the right for a decision meeting, which we prefer to use that language. Okay, so they work together, but they're not the same. Another way to look at it is marketing gets you to the red zone. If you're an American football fan or a sports fan of any kind, when you get really close to scoring that goal or, or, or make, you know, making sure you get the points on the board or however you want to look at it, depending on what game you're thinking about, American football, there's a term called red zone where you're just getting really close to the end zone. That's what marketing does. Gets you, gets you, so you're saying we have a chance. We got a chance. Like that's what marketing does, right? So prospecting is technically marketing, not sales. The reason we have to go through this in so many different ways is there's a lot of confusion around this, and especially small business owners, community leaders. They, they, they don't know where one end, one begins and the other one be, begins, or one ends and the other one begins. They, there's a little bit of a, a mixed bag there. And I get it, but we want to help you with that. Okay. So branding, let's talk about marketing. This is pre-sales communication. The first impression somebody has is basically the branding impression. Like it's, it's how you're basically dressed as an organization. Like, how do you look? How do you, how, how are you experienced? And that's actually the best definition I've heard is from a gal named Michelle Van Auten. And she talk, she talks a lot about a lot of different things, but her definition of branding is unreal. I've never seen anything so succinct and well said. It's just a really good. And look, I follow Seth Godin and, you know, we, we follow a lot of different great uh, marketing professionals, Chris Doe and a lot of others who are really, really great at branding and some different things, but man, this definition is the best. And I'm gonna let you just, just kind of soak it in as you read the screen there. Okay. But ultimately it's about that reputation, that experience, what people are, we, you know, what people are saying when you're not in the room, like that's, that's a great way to think about your brand. What, how do they explain you to somebody else when you're not there? Uh, if marketing is communication, your brand is how people feel when experiencing your company or organization. How do they feel? How, what do they remember? What was their takeaway? That, that's what you're asking yourself when it comes to branding. So let's get into the weeds a little bit. Who is your who? Who's your perfect audience? Who's your ideal customer? Who's your target market? There's so many different phrases for the same thing. It's like, who do you want to work with? Like, who do you feel called to? Who can you help the best is probably a, a good way to put it as well. What emo emotions are, are they experiencing when they're, they're connecting with you? This is all around your brand, your first impression with these folks, okay? So if you really care about serving your audience well, you're going to care about branding. And one way to think about your brand is there's, there's almost like three major personality types for a brand. Are you like Mr. and Mrs. Clarity? Are you like the creativity genius? Are you like faithful, consistent gal or guy? Like wh which one of these three do you, do you feel like personifies you? And what we say is lean into that strength. We're coaches, right? So we always pull out the strengths, help, help you double down on that. That's, that's kind of our MO. That's the secret sauce. Pull out your strengths, double down, double down, double down on your strengths. We're big on, you know, finding your strengths. And this is one way to do that. So if you're listening to this recording or if you're here in the VIP Zoom room and you found your way into the room, ask yourself or put it, put it in the chat box, put it in the comments. Are you a clarity person? Are you a creativity person? Are you a consistency person and yes we're all three i get that we're, we're holistic people i i understand that but i'm just saying which one of these three really personifies the your strength there's a, the other two will come and go but but which one of these three do you like find yourself almost automatically doing so that'll give you an idea of kind of how to frame your the own your own the psychology around your own brand and you want to lean into that you don't want to pretend like you're something you're not. So, so lean into that first and then bring other people around you to help you. Like John Maxwell talks a lot about, right? Other, bring other people around you. Nancy talks a little bit about this too. Bring those other people around you to maximize your time so you can focus on what you want to focus on. Okay. All right. Sensory branding. People say, what is that? Some, some, some kind of sci-fi movie or something? Like, what is this? Like, no, it's just the five senses that we all learned and 
what elementary school or something where we all figure out okay we're human beings we're a special kind of animal okay i mean we just sight sound smell taste and touch is like a big 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 part of our everyday existence even right now sight and sound sight and sound like we're on video like we're in connecting okay the best we can and that's by the way that's why in-person meetings have a higher close rate or higher impact if you want to think about it that way because you're engaging in all five of these at one time zoom and these video engagements and connections are good but once you get, you know, once you get into the room, it's a whole different experience. I mean, look, they're both great. It's just, you got to know what you're doing when it comes to the experiences you're giving. And if you can do that and kind of give yourself a little, little quick check, checklist. Okay. How's the sight? How's the sound? How's the smell, taste and touch? If I'm in a physically in a room together, what restaurant am, are we meeting at? You know, what, what, what experiences am I giving somebody physically in a room? If I'm in a room with them. My wife's at Disney World right now. She's on sensory overload right now. I mean, they, they have this down to a science, like literally like it's an art and a science, right? So you want to definitely, and, and, and I will also add, there is a sixth sense and there's, there's some people say there's a seventh sense and you know, all this other stuff. And that's kind of gets into the sci-fi stuff. But what we do know for sure is these five senses should be considered when developing and improving your brand. Can we agree on that? Can you give me a like a high five or a raise your hand or a yes or something? Okay, great. I'm going to start preaching if you don't be careful. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Good. Thank you. All right. A little bit of encouragement from the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Not, not really the crowd. We kind of got a, an intimate room here. This is fun. I love this. All right. Video is up to 50 times more effective. What you're experiencing right now is, is more effective than if we did like an audio call, right? Nothing wrong with a group, you know, audio mastermind call or something just to check in. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But at the end of the day, ultimately, what you'll want to know is that video is way, way more powerful than just audio or some other kind of experience. Okay. So what's authority branding? Authority branding is when you're basically spending time with other power partners, people in the room that you love, love, love to spend time with, and you want to be like them. Like that's why Nancy and I are doing a combination masterclass right now. That's super fun. All right. Tell the origin story. Ladies and gentlemen, the origin story is the thing that helps your brand stand out from the rest. This is the thing. That And by the way, this is your micro assignment, so pay close attention. This is your thing that, that b- besides some rare circumstances, like intellectual property or some kind of um, legal, you know, legal uh, document that says you can, nobody can, can use this technology or some, some, besides some rare circumstances from trillion dollar companies, 99.9% of us, this is the only thing that really separates us it's our origin story this is what brings the emotional connection and the glue and the alignment to your audience this is so powerful we 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 don't we don't we don't realize how powerful this is i mean when we go to watch a movie trailer this is what gets us into the theater when we listen to the first part of a you know a song where it starts telling it or even the story behind the song that that makes us want to go listen to the song because because we're humans we want to we want to walk in this experience together it's not rocket science but it is super interesting all right so tell the origin story what is your origin story how did you get to do what you're doing now tell me a little bit of your background your aha moment what what kind of shifted what 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 moment made you do what you're doing right now what what's the driver why and how you help your who. So I can tell you right now, I was a small business owner, nonprofit community, highly involved in nonprofits and community, just giving back to, uh, to my local community and beyond. In some cases, some, some national organizations as well. And I loved it. But I found that it was really difficult to work with marketing professionals at a reasonable cost who would stick around. 
for longer than like a few months. Like I'd have websites to get built and I couldn't find the web designer. I'd have social media, you know, help and graphic design help. And I couldn't find the original doc, you know, files because I couldn't find the person. And it was just super frustrating, especially in the early days. And then when finally we started having enough revenue to be able to hire, you know, agencies and other organizations to help other companies to help, it was just outrageous. The pricing, the, their overhead was so high that they had to build it, which makes sense. I mean, they had to build in their price point, right? So we ended up starting a marketing agency focused on helping causes, companies, and community leaders doing good in the world at a reasonable cost with no contracts, no paperwork. It was pay for performance, essentially pay monthly and see how we do and get, get, get your marketing going. So that's the origin story of me and how the company was founded. It's just a, a short story, about a minute, give, give or take. And that's how you tell your origin story. It's just tear a little bit of background with so some kind of aha moment or reason why, and then how and help, how you help your who. Those are the two major pieces. If you can share that, and Krim's going, yes, put that at the top of a click funnel. Yes, right? I mean, just, just put the story and then people will click and, and kind of see what's, what's next, right? So ultimately, we want to hear your story. And as a side note, there's organizations called like Story Brand, and there's a book, great book I'm in the middle of right now called Story Selling. There's some great resources around the power of story. But listen, let's not overcomplicate it. Just tell us your origin story. When we get on the phone, when we go on a podcast, when we record something for a click funnel, when we get record something for a website, when we put something on a social media page, or what it, the if. If there's one thing you want everybody, your whole audience to know, it's this right here. Foundation, like marketing 101, tell them your origin story. That's why I just shared mine, by the way. I'm not going to leave that out. I mean, this is part of the experience, right? So we got to pepper this into our conversations. If you have 10 minutes on a phone call with somebody, what's the one thing you want to be able to do? Hint, it's on the screen. You want to swap origin stories. You want to swap stories with people to see if there's even alignment, right, Dancy? I mean, you're all about alignment and making sure mindset is dialed and focused and there's power partnerships and profitability and really productivity at the end of the day, right? So this is how you find out if you're even going to swim together well or row together well or whatever it is, right? So depending on what it is, want to make sure. All right. So branding micro assignment is to post that one minute intro video, that origin story. I'm going to stop the share for just one second. And I'm going to see, does anybody have any questions at this point? I'm going to, I'll come back to the, the, to the screen, but anybody have any questions at this point? Nancy, Janet, Stacy, yep. Karim, do you have anything around this experience? This origin story? No. Okay, good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share screen again, so we'll get, jump right back into it. All right, good. And Stacey's like, I know exactly why you just stopped the share and shared, shared screen again. All right, good. Wanted to make sure our screen was really clear. Visibility. Speaking of visibility, now we're all set to go. Part number two. We just, we just went through session, like part number one of the Giver Marketing Blueprint. Okay, this is our signature process. This is what helps companies and organizations double their impact, double their revenue. Like this is what helps set the stage for that. And then you talk to somebody like Nancy and you actually like get that done, like execute at that next level. And then you start tracking everything. You're like, oh, wow, this actually works. Do what Timothy says, do what Nancy says. And boom, you got some magic sauce happening. Okay, so can you be found? People are like, yeah, I, we, you can find me. If you, if you look hard enough, you can find me. No, 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 no. Can you be found easily? That's the question because we're so busy. I mean, we got, we got, what is it? Five to 10,000 ads or, or images or impressions we see every day. 25 years ago, it was literally like one fifth of that. It was like 20% of that. So we have so much coming at us. We need to, we need to make sure people can find us very quickly and they don't need to remember our com full company name, uh, you know, how to spell every aspect of our, of our, even our personal name. They don't need to memorize our website, even though those are all good things. Okay. We, we, we all have those. Let's, let's, let's not downplay that, but I'm just saying 
in our busy world, if people don't don't remember anything except for like Nancy, who does you know profitability stuff, and she's based out of this area and this and that, they need to be able to find us, Google us or figure it out, like or go to our Facebook group or go go somewhere they can remember or easily you know type start typing in your name and at least find you on a personal level if nothing else, right? So we got to be able to find each other within like three seconds. If we can't, then we got to try to get at least close to that. Three to five seconds is where you want to be. Like, how do we spell Karim? Okay, K-A-R-E-E-M. Oh, and then I look at him up, look him up on Facebook and then LinkedIn. And, I've, you know, I find him in a couple seconds and we're good to go. Have a conversation. The name of his company, unless, unless you've gotten to that point where where you're generating millions of dollars in revenue or, you know, impacting millions of people until you're at that place where your corporate brand is so, is such a machine and you're out there so much. It really, at the end of the day, your, your personal brand is what people are going to find 90% of the time. First, they'll see, they'll see your, your, your company name and all that, and that'll be good. But you want people to be able to find you on a personal level, mostly especially in the first several years of your organization, okay? And then you, you slowly build your corporate brand and then you have a sellable asset and then you actually have a, a real business that is a, it's an asset, right? It's something that, you know, you grow into. But in the beginning, especially as you're growing and, and, and developing your brand, just make sure people can find you, whatever it takes. Just make sure they can find you. And very quickly, I mean, try to find yourself. Click your first name, industry, maybe the city you're based in, in an in a incognito mode. You can click in the upper right corner of your browser and usually find some kind of guest mode or incognito mode, or depending on what, how you, you know, browse for and search for things. You can, you can go into those modes and just try to search for yourself. It's kind of weird, actually, because other people's pictures come out and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure people can find you, Okay. And how does that work? Well, get your digital real estate, get your website going. Okay, great. We're a marketing company. If I don't mention a website, there's something wrong, right? I mean, we need to have our, our own digital real estate, but there's also rented platforms that we don't own, but they're highly trafficked. I mean, they already have traffic coming to them. So why not be on them, right? Google My Business is worth tens of thousands of dollars and it's free. Like go get your Google My Business listing, ladies and gentlemen, like right now, today. Commit to yourself, like make sure you're looking sharp on Google My Business. And they're always changing things, you know, moving pictures and updating pictures and just different things that you put on there. It's becoming almost like a little bit of a, a piece of real estate that's getting thousands and thousands and thousands of views. It's just wild how that works. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twi YouTube, Twitter. There's some other platforms, social media platforms specifically that you'll want to pick like one or two of these and just dominate, but at least be listed on the other. Does that make sense? Just kind of, just kind of be there. You know, you want to be in their director, you know, as part of their directory, basically. Right. So we want to encourage you to do that. And then ultimately, listen, 89% of people go online before making a buying decision. So let's make sure that you're listed in some of these other places too. Uh, we have a directory tool. Stacy, if you want to put that free tool, we're not going to charge anybody for that today. Uh, that free tool, givermarketing.com slash visibility. That'll give some feedback on where you're listed well, where you're not, what where areas of improvement, and what you're trying to do there with givermarketing.com slash visibility is enter your information. It'll 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 give you some feedback on where you're listed what well and where you're not. What you're trying for is a zero error rate. If you're if you're close to a zero error rate, you're doing well. If you're close to a hundred percent error rate. Not so much. You might want to talk to one of our team members. We have a gal named Vicky. There's some others that are trying to help, you know, help folks with these kind of things. So we want to encourage you to, to give yourself a, a little bit of a, a scan or a test or a quiz to see if you're visible online. This is a good way to do it. And it's very trackable. And then you can run it several times and just make sure you're improving over time. You can do this yourself or you can ask for some help. Okay. Glad to be able to resource you that way. And then there's a fun little tool that helps you get reviews online, which is becoming more and more and more and more important because we're not seeing as many people kind of 
give referrals out, uh, out just and, and just trusting the fact that they need to call somebody without checking them online first. So we want to be able to, to be there when somebody says, hey, you should call so-and-so. They were great at helping with this. Oh, okay. Well, give me their name. I'll check them out online. That's generally the next step. So you want to have your reviews, like people giving kind words and good feedback online so that people feel safe. And ultimately, they trust you before they even get into the first conversation with you. That's the key, right? So, and in fact, if you're enjoying this training today and this kind of group coaching experience, go to givermarketing.com slash kind words. You can say some nice things about us right there. You just click on, uh, you know, give a review or uh, be able to do that and make it easy for you to share something nice about the experience you had today. Stacy will put that in the chat box so you can, you can have that. But you can also go to givermarketing.com slash kind words. And by the way, try using that language in your company or your organization slash kind words. Don't ask for reviews because you're going to have that the one out of 10 that's going to be like, well, uh, technically they did great, but I'm going to give them a three star because they forgot to say my name, you know, perfectly or, you know, didn't spell something right or, you know, they're, they're kind of the what we call the informers or the teachers or the researchers of the world, they kind of always want to give you like some like constructive feedback. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. I just want that privately. I don't, I don't want, you know, so they oftentimes can't discern whether to do that publicly or privately. And so nothing against that. We, we want feedback, right, Janet? We were just asking for feedback earlier. Love it, love it, love it. But when it comes to public stuff, like just say something nice, like say some kind words. What, what are our strengths? Like what, what, what do people need to expect? And so say it that way. When you're emailing people or messaging people, hey, would you mind saying some kind, kind words about us here? And then give them the link. And that's what this tool is for. Givermarketing.com slash Gbox. We'll get you to a third-party tool that will make that super easy. All right. And then it obviously helps when there's some automation and triggers that happen. Um, if you set it up properly, you can get the auto pop-up box to, to pop up. And every once in a while, you got to refresh it, but it'll, it'll help you get some kind words going for your company. So thank you for doing that in advance. Really appreciate it. Okay. Visibility out. We're not just an online digital agency, right? We're we're really more of a network or a guild or a collective of marketing specialists. So we talk about offline, online, in-person, digital, like we talk about all that because of my background in community, like nonprofit work, like I'm always like in the room, right? So you want to make sure people can get to your location. If you're going to meet at like a coffee shop and there's like four Starbucks or, you know, or you have a, a shared space and it's hard to get to, like make sure people can get to the actual location that you're meeting them at, like if you're physically meeting them, um, you know, same with some, some other aspects, like, for example, your vehicle, some people are like, should I wrap my vehicle? It's like the thing to do. It's like, ah, not necessarily. I mean, make it classy, like keep it classy, like put maybe something I used to have a 350Z and I'd put a, a one, just a one little one liner on the back, like got a marketing coach or something really, you know, just simple. It's just a conversation starter in case I was driving around town meeting with different folks and at, at different occasions or, or experiences or events, uh, maybe a custom license plate, but I, I don't know about, I mean, unless you're in a very specific industry, wrapping your vehicle is not necessarily <laughs> the thing to do. You want to keep it really classy, right? Especially in the, in the spaces that we play in a lot. Okay. So your visibility micro assignment is what? Well, we already gave it to you. Use the link that Stacy put in the chat box. It's givermarketing.com slash visibility and run, run your visibility test and see, see what comes back and then put a screenshot in the group and then we'll give you credit for it. Okay. By the way, you're already on your way to earning that reward. Here we go. Some people are like, should I pay for this training? Should I, you know, like how much is it worth? And it's like, yeah, it's about a $500 value to go through our challenge. But instead, we're going to pay you $1,500 worth of marketing. How about we just flip the script and be a giver? So I want to encourage you to go ahead and take advantage of that while it's still at no cost. All right. Promotion matters. Section number three. Chapter three, if you will. Promotion matters. Yeah, of course we know that. In fact, when people say marketing, what do they immediately think of? 
how do I promote myself? Okay, that's fair. Nothing wrong with that. But if you don't brand yourself well and become visible, your promotion dollars and efforts and time and everything you're doing, posts and everything you're doing is very li limited uh, re response. You ever wonder why you put a prom promotional campaign together and it's, it doesn't work? It's because you're branding and visibility. It, it may not have to do with how you set up your promotion. It, it might have a little bit to do with that, but ultimately, if you're not branded and visible, then no promotion is going to work well. doesn't matter what it is. So the foundation has to be there, right? But when you do promote, and Karim's going to be like, amen, brother. When you do promote, Bring some ice. Inform your audience. Give them a call to action and engage with dialogue. And by the way, this is why click funnels and social media pages and really well-designed web pages, this is why they convert. Because of this right here. They keep it really simple. It's very easy to understand. And we know what the next step is. If we're interested, We'll take a next step. If we're not interested, we'll maybe save the website or the link or something or join the group or, you know what I mean? We'll just kind of hang out for a while until we decide. Okay, great. So we're big on permission marketing. So we don't force anybody to do anything. We just, here's what we do. Here's a call to action. And, and let's stay connected. And let's keep the conversation going. That's it. If you do anything beyond that, you're really maybe spent spinning your wheels in many cases. So we want to inform with a monologue, some kind of awareness, just let people know, you know, we're, we're available, we're in business, we're, we're out there, we're ready. Call to action, engage with the dialogue, don't gamble, measure your results. Mar marketing is a series of experiments. There's a difference between gambling and experimenting. Like we're experimenting because we want to make sure that we can track what we're doing and then make some improvements. Here's a good way to track your promotional efforts or gauge what areas you wanna promote in well. Referrals, events, print, online, radio, and television. These are some of the major categories of promotion, right? Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have a referral system built in where you track it, you can expect a certain amount of introductions or referrals coming in every month. That's the place to start, that's it. That's the lifeblood of your company, no matter what size you are, what kind of industry you're in. Referrals, 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 referrals. And I'm talking about a system. Like you do this and this many referrals comes back every month. You give this re reward or whatever, and then this is what we should expect. Uh, for us, we do something called referral ping pong. We get three to 400 um, referrals every year because we have a system. It's an actual like, this is what we do. This is what you do. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Right, Nancy? <laughs> We've been having some fun with that too. Okay, cool. Referrals, events. I mean, these are all good. We could spend a lot of time on this. Print is not dead, by the way. I mean, you use any of these promotional methods. Well, online, we could spend two hours just for that. But there's so many different ways to promote whatever you feel comfortable with. Some people have a radio face. Some people like to, you know, be on television. You know what I mean? Like, like we got some beautiful people in our room here today, but I mean, there's some folks you just want to be on a, you know, on the radio or something. Keep it, keep it. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm not going to say anything more than that, but I saw people laughing. So we're okay. I think. Okay. So promotional micro assignment. Post an ad or a promo video of some kind, a promo piece, a business card, a screenshot of your a social media post, like anything that promotes your organization, just pop it in the Facebook group. And the Facebook group is in, in the chat box, but it's also in the lower right corner of your screen, okay? So if you wanna go there, you can do that. All right, nurturing, really quick. We, we're running out of time here, but I wanna jump through this really quickly. Seven marketing moments for following up, nurturing, engaging that meaningful dialogue. By the way, this is where the gold is. One to 2% of people are ready to buy your service right now. Your buy your stuff right now or be involved right now. But what about the other 12, 13, 14, 15%? They're not ready right now, but they might be ready next month or the month after. That's where nurturing comes in. That's where we want to make sure. And by the way, without nurturing, sometimes even the one and 2% don't buy because they just want to feel like they're cared for before they even buy something. So 
really you're limiting yourself if you don't nurture your audience well we have some nurturing specialists and uh, joel and other you know others megan often others are using some automation to make sure people know how to get a hold of us follow up and you know some of it's automated but some of it's just good old-fashioned just hey how are you doing um with lists of people you want to make sure and stay in front of okay 80 percent of sales or decision meetings occur after a minimum five trust building interactions your introduction is technically a touch point like that your first impression your introduction don't sell anything just try to tell that story get the story out get some contact information maybe send a brief email after you're done connecting by the way in the email you want to ask a question keep the dialogue going right you almost never want to create a long email and then have no like question or action item or, you know, like you want to have something at the end of that email keep it short it's probably a preferred method for most social media connections like what's wrong with connecting with people on facebook and linkedin and instagram and other places depending on where they frequent just find them and connect with them i mean if you want to do business with them you're probably going to be connected on one of those social media platforms at some at some point so might as well just do it on the front end give something they value Keyword they, <laughs> we can talk about that later, but they got to value what you're giving them. Like you can't spam them with stuff just because you think it's interesting. They have to think it's interesting. Invite people somewhere you're already going to be like these combination master classes, uh, some of the events that you already have going, wherever you're already going to be, just invite people there. Online, offline. Be a networker. Like, hey, I thought of you. You want to join me on this thing? Like, it doesn't matter if it costs. A few dollars or if it's free or you know as long as it makes sense for them it'll be a blessing a lot of times just being in a room and networking like we can all network right now in this combination master class put your linkedin profile in the chat box in the vip zoom room chat chat box do that like you might get end up with thousands of dollars with the value you already you're already getting a lot of value just from going through this but but connecting with other people is invaluable it's super powerful personal notes Text, we do a lot of social media, private messages, PMs, DMs, all that good stuff. Uh, phone calls, we keep it really short. We don't leave long voicemails. We actually don't view the phone as a sales tool anymore. It's just a marketing get, get to know you kind of story swapping tool. It Like sales call, that doesn't make sense to us anymore. And maybe it did 20 years ago, but it just doesn't anymore. You don't really sell anything over the phone. You just swap stories, get to know each other, and then pop on a Zoom or get in the room together or do whatever you need to do to kind of get a decision meeting going. But ultimately, we don't really sell. Technically, we don't sell anything on the phone with rare exception, just rare exception. Uh, marketing gets you to the green, and then you got to put it in. So that's the giver marketing blueprint, ladies and gentlemen. Move at the speed of trust. At some point, you do need to ask for the sale, but you got to be in a decision meeting before, when you're going to do that. They got to already trust you. They already got to know that they want to probably work with you at some level. They're just asking questions like, how much does it cost? What's the commitment? Um, what's the next step? You, you, those are buying questions. The marketing is kind of, you're, you're shifting from marketing to a decision meeting at that point. You're in a sales conversation at that point. So that's when, that's, that's the beauty of some of these online portals is they get you right up to the sale. And in some cases, um, the magic of some of these platforms and different things is they actually get you a micro sale, a small sale. And that's that's kind of the beauty of some of the modern technology. But at the end of the day, you got to think about it in terms of marketing leads to a decision meeting, whether it's you know online or in person or on Zoom or whatever. We got to make sure and go from that 10 minute call to maybe a 30 minute Zoom. In some cases, we can even meet in person or in an event. Okay, so ultimately, that nurturing assignment is to post your touch points in the group. That group that you see there at the bottom right corner, givermarketing.com slash group, post the four, five, or six touch points that you do generally in order in the way that you prefer to do it. Do you do it that way every time? That's a, I don't. I don't know if that's necessary, but at least you have a preferred method, a system, right, Nancy? Something that you can kind of rely upon that gives you that nurturing. It's like, where did I leave off with that person? Well, generally, I send them a quick 
you know, social media note. And then I sent them an email and then, you know, this, and then there's a phone call. And have I had the phone call with them yet? You, can, you should probably know where you are in a nurturing sequence with any given person at any given time. You should have a system where you, you know, like, okay, I had a quick chat, but we haven't really dug deep. You should know where you are in this kind of marketing, nurturing, prospecting journey. Okay. And then obviously, once you get to a decision meeting, then you're in a totally different funnel. You're like, it's all about like extreme value at that point. Exchange. How does that look? Timing, all that stuff. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, your call to action. Should you choose to accept this mission is to join the Giver Marketing 30-Day Challenge. This is one, session one right here of four. So you've already gone one quarter of the way through. You've already started the challenge. You're already here. So might as well just finish, okay? So we gave you a little primer, a little, little appetizer, a little starter. And all you have to do is go to givermarketing.com slash challenge and you'll have access to it. At this time, it's no cost. At the time of this recording, it's no cost. We will be charging for this in the future. There is a $500 a month value. And so just know that if you can get in right now and you know, click on the link or Stacy's gonna put that link in the chat, chat box, but we're also gonna have it on, on our Facebook page and all over the place. If you can squeeze into this, you'll, you'll find some extreme value. And our goal is to help you double, triple your, you know, your impact, your revenue through some good solid marketing foundations that set the stage. Think of marketing this way, at least these foundational principles. It, it's, it's like set, setting a foundation to build a house. Your house is the, is the company and the foundation is really kind of marketing some basic productivity stuff like Nancy's gonna talk about. These are the basics of your business. If they're not set strong, then you're building a house on sand. You're building a house on something that doesn't, it doesn't work. So no matter how hard you try, you can, you can have a little extra grit and try a little harder, but you're not going to see the results you want to see unless you have basic marketing, basic productivity and focus kind of tools kind of zeroed in for your time management, some of those kind of things. Okay, so squeeze into that if you can, and then we'll see you in future challenges, which happen every Tuesday, by the way, 8 a.m. Pacific time. It's only once a week. We don't meet every day for 30 days. It's just once a week. And so it's, it's three more sessions that you would you would join in on to earn the reward too. Okay, branding, micro assignments, story video, visibility is that, those scan, that scan result, that special link that we gave you. Promotional piece, just gotta post that in the group. Nurturing process, kind of your follow-up system. P pop that in the group and you're already four micro assignment, assignments in to the challenge. You're already in it. You're like over halfway done with your micro assignments if you do those four things, okay? And then we'll give you some goodies along the way. All right, Stacy, how are we doing on time? I don't even have my, I, I was so excited to get started. I don't even know what time it is right now. I just want to make you're sure. You're doing good. You have uh, four minutes left on yours. And Stacey, oh. is there any questions? Does anybody have any questions for anything? Yes, good. Thank you, Stacy. What kind of questions do we have from Janet or Karim? Any, I know Karim, you've been through this a few times. Tara, Riley, what's up, man? Good to see you. Good, and welcome um, everyone. What do you guys got? I mean, you can somebody break the ice so we could have a couple of minutes of just just interaction here. Stacy, what stood out to you? Let's let's just make it easy. Um, for me, it's making sure that your origin story is dialed in. That's something I've been working on over the past year. So, and and to know that your origin story right now could be one thing, but it may change or it may expand as you grow mm -hmm. and as you're. Um, maybe shifting gears and pivoting to what fits your life. Because we know sometimes it takes some time before we know exactly where we want our business to go. So yeah, the more mature it. our organization gets and the more mature we get, the, the more mature that story gets. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's like if you ask a seven-year-old what their origin story is, it's a lot different than a, you know, a 47-year-old, right? right? So it does evolve, but there's some principles that kind of kind of carry through. It's kind of interesting how that works, but cool. Great, great, great thought. Uh, any questions, Morgan, Tara, Riley? I got uh, Jane, one. Nancy, what do you got? So Google, you talked about Google My Business. Uh -huh. And what about if you are 
a solopreneur, you work from home, you don't necessarily want to put your home address as the address. Great question. I wish visibility Vicky was here. Vicky because was I want, here, yeah. I want to give a, a, a clear answer, but but Google changes so you know these platforms change so much. I, I want to be careful with this one. I know there's ways to hide your actual physical address on Google at the time of this recording. That I do know. So you could you could put your business name or even your I even have one for my you know my personal name too. I, I've done a little bit of both. Uh, personal brand and then company brand uh, on Google My Business. And one of them, I, I'm i pretty sure we we hide the address. And in some cases, some people prefer to try to squeeze in like a, like a virtual address. Google's starting to pick up on that and they're starting to flag some of those. So you got to be really careful, but there's ways to do it. There's ways to do some either. Some people use like their local UPS store or a post office box instead. Yeah, you could try it. And if they flag it, then you can just say, hide my address and put your other address in. Um, I can answer just a little bit for you because I yeah, have the same thing. Uh, when Visibility Vicky went through my uh, business and we got myself onto the Google, we couldn't use the PO box. So it won't accept a PO box, but it'll accept like, so you could choose, like you're saying, like a UPS address or something like that if you don't want to have a, a direct address. But that's a concern for all of us, actually, because, well, I shouldn't say all of us, but most of us, because we are all entrepreneurs that majority of us are working from home or for me. Now I'm in a co-working space. So, you know, there's like that address that I could update to as well. Yeah, there. anywhere you can receive mail. Yes, yes, exactly. Is, is where, is, is the way to, to start. And then you can hide addresses or look look at, look at some of the workarounds. My post office, this is just me in the United States. I don't know about other places. You Canadians and others in other parts of the world, or I don't know. But my post office now has a way to give a physical address. And the mail goes to my PO box, but it's a physical address. It's just one little click you do on the, the US post office. <clears throat> I didn't know that until like a year ago. So I tried it and it worked. Awesome. And I see Morgan had you, you had your hand up there. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Nice session. I really appreciate what you guys are doing here. So I got a question. Uh, I mean, I'm an old school guy. I basically try to, uh, you know, build my brand based on, on the skill and, and the past success that we have. Um, I'm talking about a video based uh, prospecting. I mean, I guess that's a new thing these days. My, my team is developing that. So my question is, uh, I mean, a guy, uh, sort of an introvert like me who doesn't want to be, you know, uh, a celebrity or some, some, some sort, uh, is it better to showcase um, our, our, our skill or capability, like a, a business case or analysis that we do for our, our prospects, or is it better to, to you know, uh, come in front of the camera and, and, and talk to them? I mean, what's, what's, what's better, showcasing the skill as, as part of personal branding or, or, or the personality itself should be included in it? So what's that, what's that phrase? Help me with this, Nancy. Pe people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Did I say that right? Yeah. So I look, my background is going to lean me towards, you know, certain things. And listen, when, 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 when we all get training, we got to realize there's a personality type that's training us. There, you, you can't, you can't just copy Grant Cardone or, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk or John Maxwell, or you know, the list goes on and on. Dave Ramsey, Russell Brunson, I, I could, whoever, like you can't copy them verbatim and in every single method, because then you're trying to copy a personality. That's not how God designed us. So if you're comfortable with video and you're a little bit more of the extrovert type, Get out there, do a bunch of videos like Gary Vaynerchuk or some of these other guys. Just don't drop the F-bombs. You know what I mean? Like, just keep it clean, keep it classy and, and do your thing and showcase your personality, like be that person. But if you're a little bit more of an introvert, like my wife or like others in our network that, 
you know, they'll, they'll keep their video off even, and, you know, while they're driving or whatever they're doing, that's fine. Uh, but I still, I would still challenge you t- to somehow record your origin story like five, 10, 15 times until you get one you really like, and then put that all over your, you know, your profile pages and th- do at least that. So people can get to know you a little bit as the originator or the founder of your organization. You don't have to do it every day. You don't have to create new content all, you know, like some of these cats say, I mean, people like Pedro Adayo, they just get on video and people are like, oh my gosh, tell me more. You know, I mean, there's just personalities that that's great. But if you're not that personality, showcase your origin story and then showcase your case studies, which that means somebody else talking about you, right? And then showcase your, your actual skill. Maybe do it in that order or something like that. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Nancy, do you have any insights on that? You, you have a bit, a bit of a more of a reflective thought provoking, like thoughtful personality type. So do you have any thoughts on that? I agree with what you said. And it will help to, met, and like it boosts it, it adds to it because then somebody will want to do business with you, just not the blank company. Like there's, when people like me and they find out that they connect with me, sometimes that's even more important than what I do for them. And then they'll ask that afterwards. They're like, oh, I want to work with you. There's something like there's a, a, I connect with you and I trust you. What can you do for me? But it's like, that's just going to make it so much faster and deeper in my point. I guess we're all on a journey of improving our lives and our businesses and our families. So if we like the people we're hanging, hanging out with, we're probably going to find some way to add value or exchange of value or something beneficial. If we don't like them, we're not going to do business with them anyway. So let, let's mm-hmm. just let's just see if we can practice that origin story, go into case studies, which showcase some skill. And then you can always do some of the more traditional skill based posts and engagement and showcasing that way, uh, even on our slide decks and things like tell a little bit of the story, like, like, just tell it. Right. So, yeah. all right, if cool. Hey. Widgets, it wouldn't matter. If you were just selling a widget on Amazon, it wouldn't matter. But if you do, if you're working with people and you're servicing people and you're serving them, then it really matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially the higher ticket. I like people want to know who's behind this, you know, <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. Great. Great point, Nancy. Thank you for that. Um, well, any other there- last any other last questions as we go into break time? Got to take a, got to take a break. Got to go pray or 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 have a bio break or whatever you do <laughs> in break times, right? But don't go away too far because we got another exciting section after this. Oh, you exactly. better watch out. Nancy's bringing. Oh my goodness, Nancy's bringing the the second half, the magic sauce to this sandwich right here. So this is going to be good. So Nancy's going for a bio break and then she's going to deliver the magic. All right. All right, cool. Awesome. I'll stick, awesome. uh, we'll stick around at different times over the next five minutes in case you guys have any questions, but yeah, let's take a break. We'll be back in like, four, like four, literally like three or four minutes. And then we'll just kind of rock and roll and get going. Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, pop those questions in the chat box too.
All right. Love in the chat box. Lighten up. Comments. Thoughts. Feedback. Nancy will be diving into some amazing content. Man, she's been super encouraging for us. Russell Brunson. Yeah, I like the comments from Karim about introvert, extrovert in the chat box. He talks about Russell Brunson talks. He's a bright dude. I, I want to learn more from Russell Brunson along the way. Cool. Yeah, good comments, Karim. Stacy wants to connect on LinkedIn. Great. Morgan saying thank you. Awesome. Stacy's giving some clarity on the action assignments. Can I join tomorrow? My Facebook isn't working for some reason. One person said, yeah, you can join the challenge. Just grab that link, sign up for the challenge. And actually, technically, that link will get you into the VIP Zoom room. Uh, Givermarketing.com slash challenge is that. You can see in the chat box. <clears throat> Good, good, good. Nancy's got some great comments. Just going through all the comments, Stacy. All right, let's jump in. Nancy, are you ready? I yeah. am. You're always ready. You're you're ready to go. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, uh, you're let's let's try your screen share. Make sure that's working. If not, I have you know we have a backup plan for that. Oh, good. Look, looks good. You can see. Yes, I can see. Can everybody else see? Raise your hand. Let's make sure you're in the room. Say, I can awesome. see. Raise your hand. Thumbs up. Good. Awesome. Good, good. Let's Stacey. get going. So good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Timothy, for inviting me to partner with you today. And thank you, everybody, for joining us and choosing to spend your valuable time. I know I have several people that are catching this on the replay that weren't able to make it here in person. And if you have any questions for those of you in the VIP room with us, please do put them in the chat because I want to make sure that they are answered and um, we'll get to them afterwards. And there'll be a couple of times that we, um, I will ask for some questions and I would love your responses so you could add those into the chat. So let's get going. How many of you did everything that you set out to do this year? If you didn't raise your hand, don't worry. Science says 92% of people don't actually achieve their goals. Those other 8% maybe achieved some of their goals or won't admit to being in the 92%. How does an entrepreneur measure productivity? This seems to be a little bit of a delay. Okay. How about the bottom line? Isn't, how about profits? Isn't that what they say is the bottom line? So how many of you feel like, I'm so busy. I'm just too busy. There's just never enough time. Well, there is a huge difference between being very busy and being productive. Being busy will keep you broke while being productive will bring you profits. And I assert that the missing piece is planning. Most of the time, people are out there working really hard every day and like throwing spaghetti against the wall, hoping it will stick. We hope that at the end of the year, we will have made a profit. Well, I am Nancy Abramson. I am a success coach. And there definitely seems to be a delay. So I do apologize for that. Uh, I'm going to show you today how to go from productivity to profitability, and I am on a mission to help small business owners who are overwhelmed with too much to do, who just can't take time off, have both thriving businesses and also enjoy their lives. Who am I? Well, I have over 30 years of experience in business. Yes, I started as a baby. And, <laughs> and as a CPA with one of the largest national public accounting firms, I audited companies. I prepared financial statements and tax returns. As a CFO, I played a key role in the sale of a financial company to a publicly traded London company for millions of dollars. 
I've worked for large companies, midsize and small ones, as well as starting my own. I now work with small business entrepreneurs, small business owners who are service-based entrepreneurs, and I help them overcome time management challenges and help them grow their businesses so they have personal and business lives that they are excited about and that they love. Now, for some of you, this might sound familiar. I was the poster child for, you've got to get good faith in school so you can get into a good college, so you can get a good job, so you can work really hard and then enjoy my life sometime later. Well, it was 10 o'clock at night. I was alone at my desk, still working. And this was very common and I'd been doing it for years. And I was raised to work hard, do what needed to be done. Can anyone relate to that? Well, I was looking out at the dark hallway, exhausted and depressed and wondering, is this how life is supposed to be? Working really hard, hitting snooze several times and dragging myself into the office every day, pining for a vacation and waiting to enjoy my life sometime later. No, it doesn't have to be that way. So now I have my own business, which I love, and I have freedom with my calendar to enjoy my life now, not sometime later. And that is why I do what I do and why I help other small business owners have this as well. And instead of taking the 15 years that it took me to learn that lesson, you can work with me and have that in less than a year. From the outside, it looked like I had a great life. I was a CFO, making good money, living and working in Manhattan, and I was miserable. I did what I was told to do and what needed to be done, and I didn't question it. I was controlled by my calendar and everyone else's desires, working until 10 most nights, and you can see that I was very, very busy, but I wasn't very productive. And because I said yes to everyone else's desires, I worked crazy hours, being very busy and not getting the most important things done. I was working so much that I needed three 20 ounce cups of coffee every day. One in the morning to get me started, I'd grab one on my way back from lunch. And then late afternoon, I'd grab another one to get me through the late night. Now don't get me wrong, I love my coffee, but I drank so much that my body said enough and I broke out in hives everywhere and it was worse than when I had chicken pox. I was so stressed without having a clue how stressed I was. And after we sold that business, I started a business doing something I love with total freedom over my calendar and I was never happier. So how many of you feel like you can't take a vacation or you can't take any time off? How many of you are controlled by your inbox, the phone calls, text messages that come in, reacting to everyone else's desires and agendas that are just keeping you so busy? Do you feel that there isn't enough time in the day? Do you, how many of you have to-do items that roll over day after day? Well, if you would like to release that busyness and be more productive, then you are in the right place. Would it be okay if I show you how I took control over my calendar? I would like to teach you about my signature system, the three P's of planning, power, prioritize, and profits. Power, exercise your power to say no to distractions that don't serve you or move you towards your goal. Prioritize, are you doing what's most important or avoiding sales calls to work on your website? Again, Plan the work and work the plan according to what's important to you. And profits, do you plan for profits? Now let's look at these a little bit deeper. Power, exercise your power to say no to distractions and things that don't move you towards your goal. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you're the one that should do it. For example, after selling, helping that company get sold, I told a friend I would help her with her growing jewelry business. She taught me what I needed to know. And the first pair of earrings I made, somebody bought off of my head. This was so exciting. So now I'm doing something that I love and making money from it. 
And so I hired a photographer to take pictures of my designs for my marketing materials. And as Timothy taught us, marketing is very important. And then as my designs developed, I needed pictures of the new better pieces. And I have a passion for photography. So I thought, why should I spend money and pay him to do it? I could do it myself. And I did do it. And I recreated his studio in my one bedroom apartment in Manhattan. And I took two days to replicate what he did in a couple of hours. Exactly. Two days that could have been spent doing revenue producing activities. So wouldn't it have been smarter for me to hire him to do it while I made more money? So just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. And just because somebody asks you to do something doesn't mean that you have to be the one to do it. The key is acknowledge the request. Nancy, I got a quick question about this. Of course. So I know you're in the flow here, but I, I just wanted to just a- ask, like, do you, do you, I mean, you and I have had some, some real significant, you know, work together and some different things over the, you know, over the, the time we've known each other, but what, do you find that some people don't value their time the same as maybe somebody else, or they view like their time is worth like, you know, X amount of dollars. And then somebody else views it as like five X amount of dollars uh, per hour or like, how, how does that work in, you know, in your space? And actually you pointed to two, two different elements. So for a long time, I didn't value my own time the same way that I didn't want to give my money, but I was so much faster to say yes to giving my time than to Mm. give you my money. And it cost me so much in using an old computer that barely functioned because I didn't want to spend the money yet, or I'll spend for that later when I have more time, I'll just volunteer, I'll offer to do this for you in exchange. And I would end up bartering for things that I didn't necessarily want or that weren't the same. So the biggest lesson for me was learning to value my time and put a bigger value so that I didn't give away my time. You can always make more money, but you can't make more time. I'm always curious of what people actually put as far as a value on their time, like actually like answering the question, like put put it in the chat box, put it in the comments. If you're watching this replay, what, 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 what is your time worth? let's just use an hourly, you know, an hourly rate. Like what are you worth per hour to yourself? Because what Nancy's saying here is extremely powerful as far as a mindset of of how you actually. So because when they're, when I've gone through it myself, when I was starting out and with my clients, like what is the value that you're putting on your products and your services and how much should you charge? But that's a much bigger conversation. Yep. And we, so anybody that's interested, contact me. We can have this conversation more or maybe at the end after we get through the rest. I just want to make sure that I get through the, yep. all the, all, I have so many great tips that I want to make sure I get that through. So, and so life has been looking a little different these days, right? We've got new challenges. We're working from home. Maybe we weren't before. Maybe. Um, we're creating new opportunities. Maybe we're not doing the same thing that we did before, or maybe we're used to working from home and now there's spouses and kids that are home a lot more often. And there's a lot of extra distractions and busyness. So for me, when all of this happened, it wasn't Netflix, but all the great webinars and challenges and programs that everybody was offering that I couldn't say no to. And they were offering them for free. So I was like, yes, 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 all over the place. And I was like, with all this time home that I never had before, I became so overwhelmed that I'm like, there's not, I have no time. I was like starting to go spiral. And I realized that I had to take my own coaching and remind myself of what I'm teaching you here today and get control back over my calendar and start saying no to things that were distracting me from my goals. So another example I have for you is that I used to be the assistant director of finance for a nonprofit. 
and we gave away half a million dollars a year. And I was working until nine, 10 o'clock almost every night. And I could never catch up. Everyone could see that I was very busy until one Friday morning, my adorable kitten, who you see on the screen, who loved to go into the wet shower after I was done, jumped onto the sink and started slipping and sliding. And I did one of those crazy moves to catch him. They, it was total instinct. They land on their feet. He would have been fine. And I herniated a disc in my neck which got worse the next weekend at the games for the physically challenged when a piece of that disc broke off. And now it's pinching the nerve down my right arm. I have pins and needles. And of course I'm right-handed, so I can't write, I can't use my mouse and couldn't look up. I couldn't turn my head. And as you can see, everything's fine. I had surgery, they took the piece out. But the lesson was that after six weeks of disability, I came back all of those projects that absolutely had to be done right away was still there waiting for me when I came back. And what I learned was that I didn't want it to be the same as when I left and I wanted it to be different. So I learned how to say no while managing others' expectations. I left work at six o'clock most nights and nobody was mad at me. So how do you say no to the important people in your life? It's easy, you just say no, right? All right, so it's not as easy as that. So let's look at how that looks on the court. Here's an example with my boss. When, and if you're an entrepreneur and you don't have your boss, don't discount this, it applies everywhere and it applies at home with the family too. So she would say, she would, dump things on me. She would delegate. She would come to me and say, I need this to be done. I never knew I could say no. So now I would always respond. Okay. Yes, of course. Always respond in the positive and the affirmative. And then you could follow up and say, okay. And currently I'm working on this, 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 and this help me prioritize what would you like first because I can't get it all done and I'm only human. And she's responding to what she's thinking and what she's got on her plate. She wasn't thinking about what I had on mine. And when I pointed that out, then she got the perspective, okay, now can she take something off of my plate? She, can she change a deadline? Can she manage somebody else's expectations? Now we can figure out and I didn't, have to, I didn't have to sacrifice myself and kill myself with these crazy hours. And she wasn't upset with me. But the most important thing is to make sure that you start off with the yes and versus the no, because if you start off with a no, it can't be done, it's impossible. That person is automatically upset, defensive, annoyed, and shut down, and they will not be willing to negotiate and it's important to communicate upfront or as soon as you see there might be a delay rather than after it's already late. Another technique I applied, instead of repeating my boss's behavior and delegated and just dumped to my staff because they were already complaining that they had a full workloads too. So instead I enrolled them in what needed to be done and I had conversations with them and I, explain why it needed to be done. And then they became part of the process. And then I asked them for suggestions where they were able to participate and sometimes gave me some new th insights and things to try. And then they stepped up and took on more work because they wanted to help get it all done. And they were part of the process. Just because I was responsible for getting it done didn't mean I had to be the one to do it. And it works at home too. I would love to help you with that. Or I would love to run those errands for you. And right now I'm preparing for my masterclass. I'm running my networking group. I have coaching calls and I'm dealing with this. So does it really need to be done now, today? Can you help me with Y so I can help you with X? Can we do it another time instead? Again, people focus on what they're dealing with and not what you're dealing with. 
So if you present it in this way, they realize that you're not sitting around with eating bonbons with your feet up. It's so much easier to say no or make a counter proposal that works for both parties. And maybe you can relate to this one. I have a dear friend of mine who I love immensely and she was always late for everything. She didn't feel like she could say no to people that were important when they invited her to things. So let's say she had plans to meet Mary at a party on Saturday and then I invited her to dinner on Saturday she didn't want to say no, so she would push dinner up a bit and she would show up but not stay quite as long so she could run to go meet Mary. And if somebody else important to her invited her to something, she would only stay for a drink and then run to something else. So she was always running to try to make everybody, to make an appearance at all of these places. And for her, it wasn't the fear of missing out. It was the not wanting to disappoint somebody that she cared about. So I helped her to transform that. And so she learned that she was honoring me more and honoring other people more when she would say, you know what, I'm so sorry, I would love to. And I have a prior commitment. Are you free on Thursday instead and we could do something different? And then we felt more appreciated when we had quality time together instead of her making appearances and rushing somewhere else. How many times are you invited to do something that you might not, that might not be the right thing for you, or you don't really want to, and it's not in line with what you want to accomplish? I recommend separating the thing and what you expect to get out of it versus the person asking it. Now, sometimes it's really important to do the thing because of the person asking, and you want to support them, and that's fine. The key is, are you feeling great about it? Or are you feeling guilty or conflicted or pressured about it because you know you should be doing something else? If you're not feeling good about it, that's your indication that it's time to say no. So let's get to the second P is prioritize. Are you doing what's most important or avoiding your sales calls to work on your website again? Or maybe it's Netflix or something else that's distracting you. Plan the work and work the plan according to what's important to you. I work with my clients to create a simple plan with realistic goals to have power and freedom with their calendar. Did you make all of the sales calls that you planned to? Did you make the money you wanted to? How many of you schedule time for planning in your calendar? And if you don't, I recommend that you do. So one of my clients called me, he was so stressed and overwhelmed. He was, he, he was canceling on things left and right, things that would work, that weren't work, things that would, like he just could not catch up and he was spiraling and overwhelmed. I told him to stop. I worked with him. I gave him some of the, I gave him these tips. He called me two days later so lit up and excited after applying these tips that he found he had all he had more time than he thought for his family he had time for dates he had time to go to the gym he was making more money he had more time for work and it's just how everything felt to him so it's so much easier to to get caught up in that overwhelm there's so much but when you get really clear and specific and you schedule the things into your calendar, you can have time for everything. So let's look a little bit more if you about how to do this in reality. So if you haven't already done it, you want to have a to-do list. You want to plan everything out, dump everything. First, get everything out of the brain. Dump, 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 get it, whether it's big or small, don't judge it, don't, don't analyze it, just get it all out of your brain and on paper. And then you prioritize it. And if your to-do list feels overwhelming, I recommend a ta-da list instead. So you could do ta-da every time you finish something and cross it off your list. And I have a copy of this and we'll put it in the chat so that you can have it for yours as well. So now with all the stuff that you've gotten out of your head, now let's be honest. 
Does it really need to be done? Does it need to be done by you? And by when? If it needs to be done, schedule it. Put it in your calendar. For me, if it's not in my calendar, the likelihood that it's gonna be done is slim to none. Now, pick the top three things. Focus on the top three and not just the easy, low-hanging fruit, let me just bang this out because it's fast. The three things that are gonna make the biggest impact for you. Focus on those, avoid the shiny objects, get that done, don't start anything else until you get those done. If it's a large task, break it down into smaller pieces and schedule the smaller pieces. I will say that I just had to remind myself of this lately because with my accountability partners, I had a couple of things that just kept rolling over every time I, we met up every week. I'm like, yeah, that's still not done. And it impacts how you feel because now it's weighing on me that it's still not done. And then when I started to break it down into the smaller pieces, there's, a, there's an energy and excitement of, yep, that's done. Yep, that's done. And you feel like things are moving on and you'll get so much more done. The, the emotional side of that is rewarding. Now, I admit that I'm one of those girls that has done things and then written them, put them on my list just so I could cross them off. So I do get excited about checking off boxes and crossing things off my list. So you should know that's who I am. <laughs> so now, what if it doesn't need to be done? All those things that are, it would be nice if it were done, but it doesn't need to be done, put it on a separate list. My friend says, calls it her parking lot. So you know that it's taken care of and it's addressed so you don't have to keep, your brain doesn't have to burn the calories trying to remember it. And then when you have time in your calendar, you can always pull that out. I would recommend glancing at it every week just to make sure that a priority hasn't changed and it needs to be scheduled and maybe it needs to come to the other list. But it will give you a lot of peace when you know that it's written down, it's captured, and you don't have to worry about it. And if you can delegate things, this is the time to delegate it. Are you entering the things in your calendar realistically? This is such a huge one. Like, do you include the time it will take to get to an appointment and the time it's gonna to take to get to the next appointment? A lot of people don't do that. And then what happens is that you end up booking appointments too close together and then you start running into each other and everything starts slipping and sliding. And then at the end of the day, you finally get home and you're late, you're frustrated, you're tired. And the things that get eliminated or sacrificed are your self-care or your family time, which are so important. So I have another tip. I love entering my tasks as goals instead of tasks. So for example, today, inspiring entrepreneurs to have lives they love versus masterclass. How would you relate to your calendar if it was filled with goals instead of tasks? Now, the third P is profits. How many of you plan for profit? Do you have a budget? Is that a scary word for you? A lot of people get really freaked out when we talk about budgets. With a budget, you can see, and all it is is that if everything goes as expected, will you have money left over after you've paid your expenses? So I work with my clients and I help them have a customized plan to make money and help them grow their business by knowing their numbers. So another thing, so with a budget, if you think about it in advance and you have this plan, so if things go with, and it's as easy, so for the people that are wigged out and freaked out about budgets, the best way to start or an easy way to start is if you have a financial statement from last year, or if you know what you did last year, that's your starting point. Okay, I made this much money last year. Am I gonna make more? I, I had this many clients, am I gonna have more? I did this many classes, am I gonna do more? Then you would increase it by what you think. I paid this much for my phone bill. Is that still the same? I'm gonna pay it every month. 
I paid this much for my website. Is it going to be the same? You have a budget. And if you do it in advance, you can look and see are the results what you would like? Is it what you want? Are you going to be profitable? And if it's not, you have time to adjust. It's a very simple math equation. Revenue minus expenses is profits. You can either raise your revenue, decrease your expenses, or a combination of both. It's as simple as that. So I work with my clients. I make it, I show them how it's so easy and that numbers are not scary. And I love this quote from John Maxwell. A budget is people telling their money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And I retweaked it where a plan is people telling their time where to go instead of wondering where it went. So would you like some more tips? I have some more pro tips for you. Have we reached capacity or do we have room for some more? Okay. Schedule everything in your calendar. I hate to break it to you, but you have the same 24 hours in a day that everyone else does. That's a fixed container. As much as you would like to add more time, nobody's figured out a way to change that yet. And like I said before, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. So now you get to choose how are you filling your days? It's like a jigsaw puzzle. I'm a big fan of jigsaw puzzles. I always start off with a border. So you put the outside pieces together. That's as big as it gets. That's your container. And then you have that pile of all those other puzzle pieces that how is that gonna fit in here? And somehow magically they do. Well, now your day is like your puzzle. You have the 24 hour container and now you get to see and decide how are the pieces gonna fill up your, your day. What's important for you? You need to schedule time for sleep. You need to schedule time for work and self-care and family time. Is working out important to you? Do you schedule it in your calendar? Include time for the sleep. If working out is important to you, you're putting that in the calendar and honor that commitment to yourself the same way as if you had an appointment with somebody else. It's interesting how we tend to um, put more weight on the, the commitments and the appointments with other people versus the appointments or the things that I intended to do. Sometimes until I started scheduling them, I would kind of sacrifice those as well. And be realistic about those times as well. Do you need time to set up or prepare for a meeting? Do you wanna review the notes or from the last conversation? Do you have to look over what you're gonna talk about? Do you need to make notes afterwards? Schedule that because otherwise you'll book the appointments too close together and it won't get done or you'll be late for the next appointment. Do you plan to shower after your workout? Which I highly recommend by the way, but include time for that in the time that you block off. If meditation is important to you, schedule it. Date nights, schedule them. Family time, schedule it. When you're running behind and overwhelmed, self-care and the family are usually the things that suffer the most. So another tip, I worked with a couple of clients that often felt so overwhelmed because they planned their days, they did all of this and they had this perfect plan and always these unexpected fires would pop up that they had to address. And it would disrupt their beautiful plans. And then they'd be upset and constantly overwhelmed and frustrated and angry. And so if you're like them, then block time out for your fires. Schedule time for those unexpected. You don't need to know what it is. You can make it a fun name, call it whatever you want, but this is your, you know, fire time, your, you know, those clients, you know, whatever you call it. And if you get lucky and nothing happens, then you have time to work on that other would be nice list and some of those other tasks. But when it, then when the things come up, you could be a little annoyed that it came up, 
but you're not, your day is not disrupted and hijacked because you've got the space for it. And I think I mentioned before, honor your time commitments to yourself as much as you honor the commitments to others. If something comes up and you have to put out a fire and you have to do it, look at your calendar and choose what you can delegate or move, like reschedule it so that you still are taking care of that time for you and what you need to do, whether it's your bookkeeping or your administrative work. You still want to honor that time. So you want to like reschedule it. Make sure that it doesn't just slip and slide away and disappear into the ether. Like the other day when I had to kick the spectrum guy out because he hadn't finished working on my internet and I had to go, I had stuff to get done and I had another commitment and I made him finish the workout in the truck. <laughs> And then he didn't quite finish it. So then I was on the phone with tech support for another hour and a half. So I don't know if that was the smartest, but yeah, honor the commitments. There's integrity. Can we, can there. we, <laughs> can we call this uh, boundaries and assertiveness with Nancy? Is that a, <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> you totally can say that. So here's what just a couple of people have been saying about me. And uh, because everybody is different, I create a personalized approach and I don't believe in a one size fits all when it comes to my clients. It starts with hopping on a phone call and finding out where being busy has been keeping them stuck and figuring out the best approach and how we can get you being more productive and more profitable. And if you have any interest or you know somebody that's struggling, please reach out to me. I work with entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one as well as in groups. My VIP coaching is customized. I have, um, it's weekly calls. It's based on what, how you define success, not how I define success. We figure out what you want and then we create the plan so that you get what you want out of your life. And sometimes it's on the personal side. Sometimes it's on the business side. And most often it's a combination of both. So we started with a phone conversation. I also would like to reward people for showing up. And I have, um, oh, I forgot to give Stacy this as a prep. So I'm gonna put a link in the chat for my three steps to be less overwhelmed now that you can have as my gift. And anybody that is here and wants, I have a complimentary 30 minute call. Let's see how I can support you. And I want to thank you all for your generous time, for your generous listening. Oh, and I have a great a Facebook group. So join there. There's great interaction. I have a couple of great new programs that I'm launching and I don't have the exact dates yet. So um, my new money dates group program has people have been really excited and just firming up the start date. So join there and you can get more information on that. And now if you have any questions. I would love to answer. I, I did jump through quickly. So we have plenty of time for questions. I Nancy. feel empowered with Nancy. I feel mm -hmm. empowered with Nancy. I'm just saying it. Yay. That's that always makes me happy. Stacey, you have a, a, a kind of an icebreaker or, or do you want me to go? Uh, no, I love this. Like, thank you so much, Nancy, for this because the but just even the budget part alone was uh, something really big. And I always tell other people to talk off their calendars, but I don't always practice that myself. So this was kind of a little kick to practice it myself as well. So thank you for that. Um, I like the ta-da list and the brain dumping. And yeah, these are all very good tips. I did get into like time blocking certain things like travel time. Now that I have some travel time, I actually did book that. So I wake up from this time to this time and I travel from this time to this time. So I did put that all in my calendar um, and it's good to put it there. But the other thing is just really to focus on that. Yeah, thank you so much for everything. My pleasure. How do you, how do you, how do you set, like, how do you categorize or how, do, what's your language around important versus urgent? Oh, how does, how does, how does that work for in your, in your, in your brilliant brain? Like what, what, what how do you process that? 
Yes, I think um, I just learned where that came from. I think it was Dwight D. Eisenhower that was the first one to create that uh, quadrant of the important versus urgent. So the important is, is it moving you towards your goals? Is it important for you? The urgent um, sometimes is for you and sometimes it's somebody else's desires. It's somebody else that's trying to like jump on your time, like customers, clients, somebody else, or um, a lot of times it's my parents, you know, uh, this needs to be done. Can you do this? I need this, you know, can you call this person? And Okay, so the first thing is take a deep breath because I had to learn not to react immediately. And then you kind of decide, like look and see. So back to the conversation and the tips about the just say no and or the power to say no to the things that don't serve you. If it's important and urgent, schedule it on your calendar and make sure it's done that day. If it's important, you wanna make sure that you schedule it. And if something has come up that's important and urgent and you had your full day planned as I'm sure you do, then you look and see, okay, what can I reschedule? What can I delegate? Now my priorities have now shifted, life happens. It's like, okay, what can I do? What can, can I call somebody? I had this meeting. It's not critical for this one. You know, uh, Janet, I'm sorry, something came up. Any chance we can move our call from today until tomorrow? Can we do this instead of 10 o'clock? I had a client, she just had her regular coaching call. She sent me an email, three of our calls. She has to change the time because a client project came up. So it's like, okay, so can we do it an hour earlier? Sure, you got it. Let's see what we can do. But don't get tripped up by everybody else's urgent. Just because it's urgent for them doesn't mean it's important for you. Ooh, that's a nugget. And don't forget when I said in the beginning that start with the affirmative or the positive before you say no. Like, oh, you wanna just honor the expectations, honor the person, you know? Oh, I totally get that that's, you know, a, a problem or, if you have a situation, an example we can use, but you know, I get that's a concern right now. I don't have the capacity at the moment, but I can get that done when you have a gap. Look at your calendar. Does it need to be done right now? Can you know what? I don't have the capacity to do it right now, but and I might not be the best person for that. You know what? Let me put you in touch with my friend Timothy. You know what? He's gonna he'll be able to help you. So the art of saying either no or not yet, or, or, or this is a better time. Some, some of the, the art of saying no in, in various ways, right. or the art of saying not yet, exactly. or the art of asking questions of, of how, you know, which, which, which one's more important. I love that. I love that. Hey, Nancy, do, I know there's other questions. Pop them in the chat box, raise your hand. Let's, let's get a couple of questions going, but as we, as we kind of land the plane today, but do people, I mean, I know what I brought to you when we were, you know, when we were having our sessions and I was trying to learn from you, but, but do people bring like, just here's my blah list. Can you just help me prioritize? Like, can you just help me like take my list of 46 things and then that I need to get done in the next 46 days. And can you just like help me prioritize or think about this correctly? Do you ever just do that? People haven't given me their list. We kind of, once we start talking about it, like the, because what's important to me might not be important to you. Right. But do you talk through it with them? Is that what you do? Sometimes. Okay. And then, so like I had a client, the, one of the ones that had the, um, the always had the fires that came up and she would get so frustrated. She's like, yes, I have it all in an Excel and it doesn't fit in my calendar. So I'm like, okay. The fact that it doesn't fit in your calendar, and I knew it didn't fit because she wasn't sleeping and she was catching like an hour or two a night. That's why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And that's why you're overwhelmed. 
So now look at that and say, what can you delegate? What can you say no to? And then the more, as I asked the questions, we figured it out and then it took her a little bit and she got it all fit on her calendar. Based on some of these principles, we've, uh, I, I know uh, Janet has a question, but based on some of these principles, we've, we've implemented some things around dates, details, deadlines, and delegation. Those four Ds, if they can be top of mind, you know, as Nancy's, you know, helping us in different things, that that's powerful. I mean, why talk about a task or a goal or, uh, by the way, I love that. Why talk about a goal if you don't have dates, details, deadlines, or, or possibility of delegation with team members? Like, why would, why would you, why would we even talk? About, that's just an idea. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an employee. If right? you're, the people that are watching are small business owners, your team could be somebody that you find on Fiverr, or there are a lot of places that you can just get a virtual assistant. There are lots of options for your team. So just because you don't think you have somebody to delegate to, you actually probably do. And contact me if you need some guidance on that. Shoot, some of our first team members were interns. I mean, you can do all sorts. Nancy, I, I loved your thought process there, right? Janet, what do you got? Um, kind of, let's say, where's my microphone? You know, as far as, because Nancy was very specific. She's like, start putting everything on your calendar. And I started doing that. And then when people would say, hey, what's your schedule look like? At first I was like, oh, anytime my, my time's flexible because I work on my own and I can do my work pretty flexibly. And, I, and, I, and then I realized I can't make that because I realized it was something else was on my calendar. <laughs> So I actually had to um, contact the person and say, hey, I'm so sorry I had to reschedule, but it taught me, you know, I really do need to focus on that. And it really has helped me. And of course, Stacy said, use the Calendly link. And I did have Calendly, but I didn't actually have it really set up. I'm thinking, okay, that's for when I get everything, all those puzzle pieces together, but it's starting to come together. Um, and I think that too, to, to do that, you know, just stop, look at my calendar, plan and really ask myself, you know, is this something that, you know, I, I can schedule and when is the best time for me to schedule? Um, because sometimes, you know, morning might be better or an afternoon. Um, and I also have found that if I really can't make an appointment, I, I don't have to stress. I can actually reschedule and people won't get upset at me. So that was a huge thing. And it, it's been just a huge, really, for me to focus because I, I was a caregiver. My partner passed away in January and it's like I was just a mess. And so I have to say, really planning and preparing um, and putting things on my calendar has really kind of got me into a place where I, I'm wanting to be. And, and so it does make a difference. And um, so I'm, I'm just, you know, you guys have great tips, great ideas. So I just want to say thank you. thank you. Nancy, how do you, how do you address the flexibility versus planning? So and one thing that um, Janet said made me think also like know your style. Like I'm not always like, especially if you're doing something that's creative, I'm not creative on demand. Like, and I can't just like, start doing some creative, like if I'm doing writing, copywriting, something like that, I can't walk away and then come back and pick it up right then and there. So, and if you're a morning person, if that's when you're most creative, then block out those times for you to be in your zone. And I, I would plan that accordingly. Like, and, and block out the time so that you're not picking up and starting out, or even with the bookkeeping, you know, you don't want to be getting in a groove and then stopping and then have to, where was I? Where did I leave? Why'd you mute me? I was trying <laughs> to mute myself and uh, or do something and I, I ended up hitting the wrong button. But uh, what about the flexibility part, Nancy? I mean, how so flexible... Could we, should we be in our modern era with all this fancy schmancy stuff that we can do with okay. our calendars? Well, like, I don't how... use the word should. Somebody okay. invited me to eliminate that from my years ago. Okay. It's a very judgmental, make wrong word, whether it's to, your, to yourself or to others. Okay. So it's, you get to choose and 
you get to decide how flexible you want to be. And it, it's like, what works for you? So you control your calendar. And then if there's something that comes up that you need to do, I've now given you the tips, the power to say no, to reschedule, like how do you make it all work? And there's um, like a harmony of, instead of the work-life balance, it, it sets you up to fail because it'll never be balanced and it'll never be equal. So it's like an orchestra. My friend Tracy said this to me and it just resonated. And it's just like in an orchestra. Sometimes it's time for the percussions to have their solo. And now you have to work harder at your business. And then now it's time for the strings. And now it's time for the vacation or extra family time. So you be flexible as it works for you so that you're happy. And it's like, all right, I got to work harder now. I'll work a little extra hours this week, but next week I'm taking an extra day off. Love that. And so that means it's super customized mm -hmm. to each one of our rhythms and seasons of life. And when we start feeling like other people's priorities and, 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 and requests, which that's all they are is requests, uh, come in, in the way of of, of our priorities and our flexibilities being taken advantage of maybe then at that point really you have a from what i'm hearing from you you have a a boundary issue and something to kind of kind of push push back into place so that you can have a healthy harmony am i using the right terminology here yes. healthy harmony between this is what i'm hearing you between your your, your various priorities in your life, whether it's work, kids, you know, uh, side business, personal care, whatever it is. I know we have Riley Jarvis on the call. He does some sleep therapy and some different things help me on some things too. And, you know, there's different seasons when we're trying to really emphasize these things is what I'm hearing from you, Nancy. So I love that. And by the way, that challenge with the word should, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> I know, I know that we're two minutes after, but I'm willing, I want to stay on and I know Greg has a question. So I want to hear that and be able to support him as well. Go ahead, Greg, unmute and ask your question. Hi, Nancy, and uh, thank you. And I apologize, I can't be on video today, uh, but I, I'm, I'm grateful uh, you can answer my question. I, uh, if something didn't click for me and I just, I, I lost uh, hold of it, earlier uh, when you were talking about uh, how to effectively communicate no uh, to, to those that are coming at you uh, uh, with requests. You know, I, 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 I heard and, and I related to uh, uh, dealing with the expectations, uh, but there was something that, that you said about, you know, uh, powerfully communicating no like I said, I, I missed it or lost it. So can you reiterate or recreate that for me? Of course. So start off with a, a, a positive. So you want to say, I would love to help you. Absolutely. That's possible. And I can't do it now. Or I'm dealing with this, this, and this. So usually it depends on who it's coming from. Like if it's my mother, my boss, or somebody like, it would be slightly different if it's a client, the the details, the conversation might be a little bit different, but, you know, yes, I would, I, I would love to help you. And right now I don't have the capacity, um, dealing with this, this, and this, or I'm um, dealing with a deadline. Can I do it? Does it really need to be done? Does it really need to be done now? Can we do it next week instead? Can we shift it like, so that you can make a counter proposal or you can offer another solution or, um, maybe there's somebody you can make a referral to. I can't, I can, I just don't have the capacity right now, but maybe this person can do it. Like Timothy might be slammed and he's like, you know what? I just, I have my calendar is booked, but maybe Stacy can help you right now. And then, you know, if you still need something, let me know. And I'm there. Like there might be something else, but the first is to don't just start off with a no, it's impossible. No, it can't be done because that just shuts people down and they're just gonna be upset. If you start off with the yes and, or I would love to and, now you, there's room for negotiation. Now there's room for, you know, can you do this? Can you handle this so I have time? Or can we do it next week? Or 
maybe I could do this part of it, but not the whole thing of it. Like now there's room for how you could say no. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, you, you, you kind of put it all back together for me and, and, and gave me some really stark clarity on that. So thank you. You are very welcome. My pleasure. Karim, Riley, got anything before you land the plane here? Good. Nancy, what a blessing. What, what, a, what a gift. What an ability. You, you have this emotional intelligence, relational intelligence mixed with planning. And it's like you're using all of your mind and heart as you're helping us. So I, I just really appreciate the well-roundedness, the kind of that harmony that you just bring to the even the, the conversation. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to throw this recording up as many places as we can. Stacy's going to help us kind of make that happen. So please let, let folks, ladies and gentlemen, get in contact with Nancy some way, shape, or form. Grab that link to schedule a time. Uh, look her up on social media, A-B-R-A-M-S-O-N, Nancy Abramson. And we should, we should be able so to make much. some magic, right, Nancy? That'll be Absolutely. fun. Thank you for the opportunity and for all the love that you've always shown me. And it's been my pleasure to come here and support your community as well. And any way I can help you, just let me know. Yeah, and if I say no, because my calendar is full, you'll understand That's when right. I'm <laughs> No, or not yet, or let's try something else. I love that. That just kind of that pivoting of the conversation. That's really good. So, all right. God bless everybody. See you next Tuesday or next, next week in some way, shape or form. Talk to you soon.